Okay, let's take a look at this calculus idea of continuity. Continuity is the idea of making a function continuous. Informally, it's an easy concept. Can you draw the function or draw the graph of the equation without lifting up your pencil? And I'll be honest with you, in almost all your math courses up until this course, that was the kind of functions that you looked at. Some sort of function that you could draw without ever lifting up your pencil. You look at parabolas, to sine curves, to exponential equations, all kinds of equations in your previous math courses. And what was unique about, or similar about every one of them, is that you could draw it without looking up your pencil. Well, in calculus, we start to look at functions now that require you to lift up your pencil. One function that we started to look at is this kind of function, where you have what is called a step discontinuity, an i.e. a break in there. And you definitely have to lift up your pencil as you're moving from left to right because you've got to account for that break or that jump that's in there. And for that reason, like I mentioned, it's called a step or jump discontinuity. Another kind of function that we're starting to look at are functions that have holes in them. Okay, obviously holes cause you to lift up your pencil. Those are usually caused by dividing by zero problems. Those are starting to notice here. And you, this could, function could even have an answer up here or below it. Not necessarily. It still requires you to lift up your pencil to draw it. But these are all examples of functions that are either continuous in this scenario or not continuous in these two scenarios. Okay? Well, mathematicians looking at this said we need a formal way of describing or deciding whether a function is continuous or not. We don't always have a graph to look at. So we need some way to determine whether a function is continuous by looking at the equation. So, let's take a look at some functions here. And let's see if we can formally define what really makes a function continuous. What really makes it a, a graph that you can draw without looking at the pencil. So again, if I look at this one, this is this problem right up here, problem number one. This one has a step discontinuity or a jump. So you remember if I kind of use that idea of limits and trace on both sides of the graph and get closer and closer to x equals c, you notice here that left-hand limit exists, the right-hand limit exists, but notice they're not equal to one another. So the limit doesn't exist. So that step discontinuity was a great key to this. I realized, wow, in order for a function to be continuous, the limit had to exist. Sounds simple enough. So let's start taking a look at some other functions. Well, again, well, this idea of a limit seems to be a key to determining. So let's take a look at this function. Again, trace on the left side, trace on the right side as you get close to C. Oh, in this case, the left-hand limit matches the right-hand limit. You see how you're both going towards the same value. Whatever that Y value is, there's your limit. The limit exists. But wait a minute. This function's not continuous. So problem two presented a different scenario. Hey, wait a minute, there was more to it than just continuity. I'm sorry, just having the limit exist. There was more to the continuity idea. It had to do with something else. So then we looked at functions well, that actually were continuous. And we said, well, again, if we did our limit here, the limit exists. Because the left and right hand limits match up. I get a y value. And notice here that the solution I get to this problem when I plug c in, matches that same y value. I get the same answer. That wasn't true here. If you notice, the solution was up here somewhere. Didn't match what the limit was. So that was the big key, is to realize that in order for a function to be continuous, not only do you have to have the limit to exist, but it actually has to give you the same answer as whatever your solution, your answer is, when you plug C in. So this led to a, a way for mathematicians to define formally what makes a function continuous. What makes a function be able to be drawn without lifting up your pencil. So the first thing is, well you actually have to get an answer. You gotta plug C and get an answer. So the first thing that they did realize is that f of c must exist. You can't have one of those scenarios where you have a hole in it and there's no closed dot above or below it. There has to be a closed dot above C. That was the first thing. The second thing they realized, well, this idea that the limit had to exist was obviously very important. So the limit at that same value C had to exist. You could not have one of these scenarios, sorry, where you had a step discontinuity. That was definitely a big no-no. 
if you wanted a function that was continuous. So that led to the final one, that idea that the way to make the function continuous was for the limit to actually match what your answer is. So f of c matches, is, means your answer, and the limit is that idea of the two fingers going to, towards the same y value. So that was the big key. If I wanted the function to be continuous, the limit had to match up with what the answer you gave. That was the only way to make the function continuous. So here's an example of a situation where we're given a, uh, uh, an equation. This is what we call a piecewise function, meaning it's broken up into pieces. For certain values of x, you use one equation. For other values of x, you use a different equation. And the, the idea here is what, what we're going to be looking at in class is how can we make the function continuous? What value of k can we plug in here to make that function continuous? Give you a hint, k equal 2 will not make it work, and we will see this in class. Okay? So the idea here is if we follow this, it says determine the left hand limit, the right hand, and the limit for this function. Okay? Well, the left hand limit is defined by the values x less than or equal 2, because that's to the left of the value I'm looking at. And in this case, we're looking at x equals 2. Well, at x equals 2, I can find the left hand limit limit by simply plugging in 2 into that equation and realize, hey, that's 6. But if I want the right-hand limit, I've got to plug that same value 2 into the right-hand piece. And so I would get k divided by 2 would be my right-hand limit. Well, we know if a function is to be continuous, these two limits have to be equal to one another. So what we can do is make an equation out of this and say, well, if the left-hand limit is 6 and the right-hand limit is 2, can we solve this equation and solve for k? And I hope you remember from algebra 1, to undo division, we multiply both sides by 2, and we find out, oh yeah, k has to be 12. If we make k equals 12, that will make both the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit match up, and therefore it will have a limit. And then if you notice, the presence of this equal to sign, less than or equal to 2, tells me we have an answer, that we can get, actually get a value for 2. In this case, it would be 6. It exists, and so the function then has to be continuous. And that's how we show that the function is continuous.